So it is almost fall and these trees need some space. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you today. It is about the middle of September 2020. So last week uh, we talked a little bit about fertilizing trees and the importance of fertilizing trees in the fall early in September. In fact, I'll go ahead and link that video here where we discussed it in detail. So here we are a week later. This past week we've had a couple days in the 80s. Right now it's about 70 to 75 degrees and the sun's already up. You can definitely tell fall is on the way here in Arizona. So one of the things that we've already found here at this point, a week after fertilizing, we already have new flushes of growth. I'm gonna have Lori follow me over here to the mulberries. These are our ever-bearing mulberries here and you can see these new growth tips. Just nice, strong flush of growth that we're seeing here. And actually this tree looks fantastic, but you can see in here, lots of new growth down in here. So this tree is about to just explode. Now, as Lori turns back and you get a good shot here, you'll see that we have our Western orchard here, which is predominantly stone fruit. And it, I don't know whether you can pick it up on camera, but all of the tips of these trees are getting a bright green tint to them. So you can definitely see that these trees are responding to that longer time in the evening with cooler weather and then the cooler temps as we start to see here during the day. So what we need to do now, and you can actually see it over here on this side, I'll have Lori follow me over. We have our Florida Prince peach trees here that we've already basically released from their cages. So one of the things that we found is the rabbits are not messing with our peach trees. So I'm assuming they're getting a taste and realizing, no thanks, not interested. So what we're gonna do, we've tested it with this tree about three weeks ago or so and we did these other three Florida Prince peach trees, remove the cages and we've had no issues whatsoever with rabbits going after these trees. So these four are already done. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back and finish the rest of these trees. We have this early amber here, which looks really good, has done fine without it. We're gonna go ahead and get the rest of those uncaged. Same thing with the peach trees, which I think are the early grandes. Uh, in the back row there. So first thing we need to get accomplished today, get these cages released from these peach trees so they can get that strong flush of growth here in the fall. They are ready to put down those roots and they are ready for fall flush. They were really happy to get out of those cages and I'm excited to see how they're doing. Next thing we have to do is we need to deal with a couple of other trees that are still on this side that are bursting out of their cages. In fact, right there you'll see our nectarine plum hybrid. So this tree starts out with dark purple leaves. So it's very easy to see the fall flush on this tree. All of these tips, hopefully you can pick it up on camera, are purple. That's all brand new growth because they start out with this beautiful purple color. So you can see we got this great flush happening. We've got great flush happening right through the cage here. So this tree is ready to go. Now the challenge that we have with this one, this one got eaten in half by rabbits here in the early spring. So we know we can't do what we just did with all the peach trees with this one. We need to keep it contained. So we happen to have a couple of trees that need to be uncontained. So let's go take a look at that. This is our mulberry patch. So we've got mulberry trees kind of in throughout. And this is one of our contorted mulberries. Really love the look of these trees. 
But we're noticing that on the other side, we've got some bunnies that are kind of attacking some of the ever-bearing mulberry leaves, but they're not bothering the trunk at all. I'm sure it's because of the sap that would come from the trunk if they tried to chew on it. Plus, these trees are getting nice and tall. In fact, they're getting so tall that we had one of these get a little bit too long and snap. I'm gonna have Lori slide in. Okay, so hopefully you'll pick this up okay on camera, but you can see this is where we lost the branch. It probably was another two to three feet taller than this, but you can see what's happened since. This is brand new growth here. We have brand new growth behind, and we have some brand new growth that's coming up in here. So where we lost the branch coming in here, we've got one, two solid branches that are coming out just as if it got pruned. Now we also know that this thing is really starting to struggle with being too tall. You can see the angle of this branch here and it's getting some damage here because it's coming up over the top of this hardware cloth. So at this point, definitely not too concerned with this tree as far as rabbits and that kind of thing. So I think what we're gonna do is go ahead and get these uncaged and we can utilize these cages over on that other orchard. So we have the mulberries done. You can tell they're very happy to get out of their cages and I'm looking forward to some strong growth there. Now, last stop as far as things we need to unleash, that would be the figs that you see behind me here. Now, we did have some issues with the bunnies nibbling at the small branches on these fig trees at the beginning of spring, which is the reason why we caged them up. Normally, I don't think it would be an issue, but a small tree with a couple of small branches, I don't want those being girdled. But at this point, we've got a couple of these that look really good. In fact, I'm gonna slide in closer to one that we are really excited about. This here would be our Black Mission Fig. Now, we thought we had one of these on the old property, and it turns out we had two brown turkeys. Not a Mission and a brown turkey. Either way, we know this one is the right variety. We actually purchased this from Reed at RSI Growers. Reed, it's doing fantastic. So much so, as Lori slides in closer, you'll see just how much growth is been put on this summer with this thing. It's still got some brand new growth happening, but this thing is pushing right up against this cage. And I wanna say this is about a three foot diameter or so cage, and it is basically bursting at the seams. So this one definitely needs to be released. We have the brown turkey behind me, and you can see that one, it's actually trying to grow through the cage as well. And if, as Lori pans that way, you'll see the blackjack fig that one definitely needs to be released also. Now, we also have a panache over here. We have a Peter's honey over here. Those trees are growing more vertical, which is pretty typical of those trees. And I think they're actually gonna be okay for now. So the only thing I'm gonna do is make sure that any stakes that we have on those trees are removed so we're not inhibiting any growth there. So now, we've gotta to get to work, get these uncaged, and we'll take a peek at these others. Just wanted to take a quick shot of this tree. So this is that Mission Fig Tree again. This has been in the ground for five months. It was tiny, it was, I don't know, this big or so. And you can see just how much it's grown, grown very, very strongly. A lot of brand new growth on these tips. And you can see once we released it, she just immediately started spreading out. We saw that with the other trees as well. So really excited to see how the fall flush treats these fig trees. Now what we need to do is we need to take some of these larger cages, head back over onto the Western Orchard. Let's see if we can release a few more of these guys for that fall flush. Everything behind Lori is already released. So now what we need to do is take these larger cages so we can protect these trees that we know rabbits will attack, protect them from the rabbits, but allow this fall flush to really set in hard. So we're gonna show you this one and then try to zip through the rest of these as quick as we can because it's getting warm out here. So you get an idea of what that's gonna look like once we're done. 
you can see this nectarine plum hybrid was very happy to be out of that cage. It's already starting to basically bush and flop down. So I know this one's definitely ready for this fall flush. So now what Lori and I are gonna do, we're running out of battery life on our backup camera. We're gonna go ahead and zip through, get the rest of these trees done, and then we'll show you what this orchard's gonna look like for the rest of fall. So we definitely learned something here this season, and that's that the smaller cages that we're all, we've always used in the past, which have been no issues with the cottontail rabbits, they simply do not afford enough protection with these trees out here with the jackrabbits and the other pressure that they're getting from different things out here on this farm. So we're learning as we go. One thing we'll definitely do is much larger cages, probably hardware cloth and a much larger diameter so we don't have these trees being cramped up in the inside. Looking back at these trees now, you can see how they kind of had that. Now I'm looking at it already, deciding what pruning cuts I'm gonna make this winter to kind of help encourage that outward growth that we now need to get established in these trees. But one thing I know for sure is heading into fall, I think I can even hear it. These trees are singing freedom. So again, we've got a lot going on this fall. Really hope if you haven't done so already, you'll subscribe to the channel. We've got a whole lot of things going on. Not only are we gonna be planting new trees, we'll be pruning these trees going into winter. We also have livestock coming onto the farm for the first time, which is part of the fertility program for the orchard and all the other things you see here. So I just want to thank you for joining us today. Again, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Questions or comments, leave those in the comments section down below. Instagram and Facebook, we post content there. You won't see here on the YouTube channel. Our Amazon shop, we'll leave a link down in the description. That's a free, painless way to help support the channel. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy. You help to support us here. And one more thing, if you haven't checked it out already, I'll leave a link in the description. Our Healthy Farm Living channel, that's a new channel that Lori and I started. That really covers all the things that we do inside and around the farmhouse after the farming is done to make sure that we stay as healthy as we can. Because the goal here on this farm is for everything to be as healthy as possible. So we just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. And then I go back like this and standing here. So just like- I push the buttons. <laughs> you're always pushing my buttons. So yeah, just like, I don't know, do a finger or something. Not on. There you go. That's a good. <laughs> Pretty worried that that is mosquitoes. Ready to solidify those roots. <laughs> Here we are on the eastern orchard again. Now, every. Huh? Western orchard. Oh, it's the western orchard. Know your directions, Dwayne. <laughs> <laughs>